Film simulations are very easy to find and change within your camera. And for those of you who aren't aware, film simulations pretty much change the look and the color of your images to look like different types of film, like what you used to buy in the little canister, the roll, and the old analog style of photography. And while it might seem a little bit gimmicky to do it in camera, there are actually two very cool reasons to have a play with film simulations. Number one is for video. To be able to bake in a, a style, a filmish look to your videos without having to do any editing later on is very powerful and very cool. And number two is for those of you who might be struggling with photographic motivation and want to add a little more reality to your images. See, no matter who you are, if you edit your images, there will be moments when you look at your photos and you appreciate the editing you've put into it. And for some of you, when you see that editing, it might actually distract a little bit from the content, from the moment, from what you captured in that photo. Where if you can look at that image and know that everything you captured in that photo is as it was on the day straight away in camera, while it can be harder to get correct, especially if you don't have that redundancy of raw files to fall back on, it might just give you the extra level of appreciation, the extra level of happiness from photography that you might have been missing out on a little bit. See, film simulations are a way of adding a unique look to your photos. Film recipes are a way of combining film simulations plus many other settings to create a unique, personalized, stylized look just for you. So how do we create a film recipe? Well, first of all, there are a few things you need to know. As I said earlier, it does not affect raw files. So make sure you set your camera to either fine or raw plus fine. You can convert your raw files to JPEGs in camera, but we're not gonna cover that in this video. And you will have different options depending on what type of sensor your camera has, either Xtrans 1, 2, 3, 4, or Bayer. The newer the camera, the more options you will have, but for the rest of this video, we're gonna be talking about the latest sensor, the Xtrans 4. Next is how to find a film recipe. That's easy, just give it a Google search or look around on Fuji forums, social media pages. People are constantly posting and sharing different recipes. An awesome website I use to get started is fujiweekly.com slash recipes. I'll leave a link for that down in the description below. And in those recipes, you will see a list of settings to change in your camera to get you a desired filmic look. But instead of just dialing those settings into your camera, there is a better way to save them for future use. To start with, press the menu button on your camera, go to the top IQ tab and scroll down to page three and you will see an option called edit slash save custom settings. Inside of here, you will find seven custom options to dial in, save, and give a name to your film recipes. Plus, if you want, you can also reset any one of these if you don't like the recipe you've saved. To then change quickly between different film recipes, press the Q button on the back of your camera, and you can cycle through them in the top left-hand corner. Though, if you're using the new XS10, I imagine you have to change that new PAS and mode dial on the top to go to those different custom settings. And do note that the option with the word base in the title will change a little bit, but this is your default one to come back to that you can't fully save over. Also, when it comes to using these in video, not all options are available in video mode. And some settings like, say, clarity can't be applied to your JPEGs or saved as a recipe when shooting in continuous high or low speed bursts. So single shots only if you want to use the clarity setting as it is very demanding and very taxing on your camera to apply. But if all of that felt like a little bit too much to take in, well, as the weather here in New Zealand has been absolutely horrific this week, I thought I'd spend all week playing with different film recipes, showing you what I got from them, and giving you your thoughts on some of those recipes and where to take it further. So let's get started. First of all, like I said, press the menu button, go down to the IQ tab, down to page three, and edit slash save custom settings. And we're going to save this first recipe to custom one. If you've already dialed in some settings you like, you can just hit the Save Current Settings button, but I've yet to, so I'm going down to Edit. This first recipe is meant to look like a Kodak Portra 400 film, and to do that, you'll need to dial in these settings. Film Simulation to CC, or Classic Chrome. Gain Effect to Strong and Small. Color Chrome Effect to Strong. Color Chrome Effect Blue to Weak. White Balance to Daylight plus 3 Red and negative 5 Blue. To dial in this exact white balance, you need to go down to the daylight option and then press right on your D-pad to bring up this colored square. And down the bottom, you'll see an R and a B for red and blue. You want the R to be plus three and the blue to be negative five. Change dynamic range to auto. And under the tone curve, set highlights to negative one, shadows to negative two, colors to plus two, sharpness to negative two, and finally clarity to plus two. Once you've dialed all this in, press the back button and an option will come up to save your custom settings. Select OK, and then go straight back into custom one and give it a name. 
In this case, I'm going to call it Kodak Portra 400. Then to select this recipe, you can either go up one option to select custom settings, or like I said earlier, press the Q button in the top right hand corner select, in this case, C1. And finally, to finish this recipe off, select your ISO to auto up to a max of 6400 and try to overexpose your shots a little by say a third to one stop's worth. I then went for a walk around my house on a real miserable day just shooting different things that I could find just to test out this film recipe. And it was fun. The added film grain I know for some people really love, but as someone who has been trying to reduce noise for years, this will take a little getting used to for me. Colours though for this first test were very pleasing but did drastically change with different exposure compensations. But with dodging the rain so much I'm sure I can do much better, so for day two I thought I'd try a different recipe and try more of a wildlife approach. This recipe is more of a pastely look to it with some muted colours and its name is Superior Extra 400. I won't read through all these settings again but if you'd like to pause the video here while you dial them in or feel free to just take a screenshot and save them for later. Though I did shoot all the following photos in a low speed burst so the clarity setting that's dialed in from that recipe won't have any effect on these photos. But the warmer, more muted colours to this recipe really appeal to me. It feels more like a sunrise sunset kind of colour to the image, even though I shot them in the middle of a cloudy day. Okay, so for day three, I thought I'd try something a little different. See, I've really been struggling with a high gain in a lot of these images, so I thought instead I'll try shooting a style that suits the high gain a little bit more. This look here is meant to look more like a, an infrared black and white. It is very, very contrasty and it is a little bit tricky to shoot when out nailing it. You really gotta play with your exposure conversation a bit just to dial it in. So once again, if you'd like to pause or screenshot this recipe, now is your time to do so. But do note, when using this recipe, it is very unforgiving with exposure. Especially if you go a little too dark, it can really crush your shadows and blacks. But to be honest, after playing with all these different recipes, I think I'd much rather develop my own one. See, while I love the actual original colours of that Superior Extra 400, the added gain just personally isn't for me. So I might go back to that one, keep the colours, tone down the gain effects, and see if I get some extra enjoyment out of shooting, say, RAW plus JPEG, and having those JPEG colours straight out of camera to fall back on while still having that personalised, stylized look to my images straight out of camera. But on top of that, I'd love to know your guys' favourite film recipes, or what websites or forums you guys go to to track down new recipes. Like I said at the start of the video, I got all of these from fujiweekly.com slash recipes. If you'd like to check them out, I'll leave a link down in the description below. I'm sure they, he, whoever produces it, won't mind it. If you could please like, share and subscribe, it would mean the world to me guys. But until next time, I'll catch you next time.